Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark for a look at what I can only describe as the wettest day of boating that I have ever done in my life. In my five plus years of boating experience, whoo my giddy aunt, this was a wet one. Um, so I've got loads of boaty footage for you, um, working a lift bridge single handed and stuff so you can see the actual solo boating experience almost from my point of view as I'm doing it. Um, if you're in any doubt as to how wet today has been, then all I can say is that now at midnight, my boots are still drying off in front of the fire and they're, whew, to be honest, after one whiff of those, I might chuck them in the fire. Um, <laughs> oh, that was an attempt at comedy. Let's get to the boaty footage quick. Well, my friends, just untying the ropes. I am already getting pretty wet. So uh, let's just go boating. <laughs> Well, this is the first time since pretty much when I bought the boat that I am actually boating with the cover up. And as you can see, it's, it's surprisingly limited visibility in a strange way. Just got this letterbox ahead of us, which I have to duck down to be able to see through. And uh, because of ducking down, it means that obviously as the lower you go, the more the front of the boat cuts into your actual view, which I hadn't really anticipated. What an absolutely... Lovely day. So my friends, you can see nice country lane here, but we're far more interested in our moored up boat sat next to this good old lift bridge here. So for anyone who's unfamiliar, as you can see, the bridge lifts up. It's a pretty simple but ingenious, uh, I think it's some sort of hydraulic mechanism as you can see. But basically, we've got a big old counterweight there. And we're going to put our windlass, which is the same thing that you use to do the locks with, onto that. And we're just going to wind it around and as you can see, up and down. Now I was hoping, given that it's such a terrible day of weather, that we might either meet a boat coming up and so one of us might get, lift the bridge and go through and then the other would go through and then close it. So it obviously halves the work. Equally, maybe, no, still nothing behind us. I was hoping that uh, something might come up from there. Now a couple of curiosities here. Firstly, as you can see, we've only actually got one more in mushroom to tie the front of the boat up with. So you can see the boat's gonna be wobbling around all over the place as we're doing this. And of course, being a solo boater here, I have had to run up and down the side here, obviously uh, being very safe and careful as I'm doing it, very cautious, to um, obviously try and see where I am in relation to the front here as it uh, curves out and that. And uh, obviously get on the tiller and uh, make sure that we're coming to a nice slow steady stop but not too far away because as you can see we can't even walk down this if we wanted to jump off over there and walk up it's all going up and down the side here <laughs> oh dear me all fun and games so yeah as you can see it really is an absolutely shocking day weather wise here very very chilly i've got to say as well anyway oh, let's uh, get winding you can see how much grass i fetched onto the stair here so as you can see, the handle just slots on over the uh, end there. And with one single hand, now I think this will probably get a little bit more difficult as it starts to rise. But if you look there, you can see, up comes the bridge. And that's how amazing the uh, mechanism is that even here, filming with one hand, you can see, I'm able to single-handedly raise this incredibly heavy solid bridge structure. Right, I better concentrate on what I'm doing. So as you can see, a lift bridge really does lift up very, very high. And uh, <laughs> it's almost a startling angle when you look at it like this to consider only a moment ago a van drove over that. Anyway, let's get underneath and uh, well, let's just carry on boating. <laughs> look at this weather. So you can see we've got a very tight angle obviously because the boat's front end is moored up so close to the lift bridge itself. 
But with the bridge obviously lifting up in such an extreme manner as it does, I mean, what's that, like 80 degrees or something? Obviously, that gives us loads of room to be able to get under. However, we've now got to stop immediately, so I'll put us into reverse. And I might uh, feed the boat through by hand after a certain point, because I'm going to have to moor the back end of the boat here, otherwise it'll float off. And as you can see, single-handedly again, we're able to nice and steadily lower the bridge. As you can also see, the boat is very, very loosely moored up there. But yeah, it's, um, well, as you can see, a nice, simple, slow process. And as there's so much that I say, like working locks on your own and other things like that, just take your time, be sensible, be safe above all other elements. When you're traveling on a boat that's on a speed limit and can't really go much faster than four miles an hour, what's the point of rushing the bigger events like this that you come across on the canal? Absolutely no need to take risks or, well, anything at all that could potentially be a bit of grief or trouble. And there we are. Right, let's go boating. So some of you might be wondering why I didn't keep the stern cover up and keep myself out of the rain. And that's basically that in the two miles or so that I was boating off to turn the boat around and get back to where I started from, obviously facing in the opposite direction when I returned there, I knew that there weren't any low bridges or humpback bridges in that run, so I knew there was no chance of catching the stern cover, which is well above head height as you've seen in the video clips, and obviously goes the full width of the boat. So many of you know, if you've seen these humpback bridges in real life, that they're a very low, narrow archway, and I'm not convinced that the stern cover would actually go beneath many of them, and I certainly think that it would be a very, very tight fit. So of course, you don't want to be slightly offline and end up leaving your stern cover uh, floating off down the canal as you, well, I won't say sail off into the sunset on a day like today, but you get the general gist. Um, just another note here, I started my tracking app and recorded the five miles or so of my trip from the point that I put the stern cover down after turning the boat around. So there's another two miles or so to add on to that five miles of today's adventure. My initial plan was to be boating right up to Frankton, book my passage down through the Frankton locks tomorrow to go on to the Montgomery Canal and then go down to Maysbury for two weeks. As you'll see, I fell somewhat short of that Frankton end goal. But anyway, without further ado, let's get stuck in. Well, my friends, I've stopped here far earlier than I'd anticipated at Welshampton. Not sure what the time is, I should have checked before I started filming, but I've been going for a few hours, and even though it stopped raining, it was just the cold that got to me. How wet am I that even through my waterproofs and the coat I was wearing underneath, this is how absolutely soaked through I am because of the wind helping to drive the rain through the waterproof coat, through the little flap and through the zip through my other coat and straight into this. So you can imagine what my shoes and my feet are gonna be like. I can feel them literally sloshing around. Uh, so I'm just I'm just gonna get inside and start getting warm. Oh my goodness me, honestly, it's not even, it's, this is one of those moments where it's actually not funny. So for the sake of some quick heat, I've just thrown one of those sawdust fire logs into the fire and lit it. So that'll get a little bit of heat going in the boat. I'm gonna boil the kettle up and well, We've got my shoes at the side, you can't see anything there, sorry. Um, so what I'm going to do now is basically just jump into the shower because one of the good things about boating all this time means that the engine will have heated the water absolutely piping hot 
And uh, yeah, then I'll come out and start hoping that my clothes are going to be drying off. Right then my friends, excuse the extractor fan and the boiling kettle in the background. I've just had a shower and my goodness me, it was great to be in some just red hot warm water. Oh, phew. Anyway, um, what an extraordinary... I only managed five miles of actual boating. Um, I think it took, I don't know, two something hours. Basically, my actual average speed, I'll put on the screen in a moment, I recorded it as if it was a normal like bike ride or walk on my tracking app, and my average speed was 2.3 miles an hour during the trip. And I thought I was going a little bit faster than I normally do. I always say that I travel slow, don't I? Um, I'm... I've got to be honest, I'm gutted at how soaked through my shoes and my clothes and everything are. I still haven't got all of my stuff back onto the boat. Um, and part of fetching the boat up this way was to be able to get to somewhere convenient to put on the stuff that I started to move off the boat when I was going to sell it. And also a new desk and some new furniture and bits and bobs. and uh, Yeah, so I've got to make sure, try my best to warm up and dry, uh, dry these clothes through properly. Otherwise, it's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow. Luckily, I've got a second little fleecy jacket like this, though. Anyway, I'm going to have something to eat and then figure out figure out what my plan is. Listen to this, my friends. Now I can hear the low rumble of the fire in the background. But the only actual sound outside that I've heard for probably the last half hour plus these birds kicking off and going wild out there. So I've probably just shown you a clip in this video that was filmed earlier and I pointed out the sounds of the birds outside being pretty much the only sounds you could hear. Well now it's getting on for 10 o'clock they're still going strong and I've got a feeling that I could have a very early wake-up call in the morning if this is anything to go by. Anyway, all the more reason to get to bed early. Well, most of my clothes are pretty much dried at this point. However, the one big sticking point we've got are my shoes, which I don't know if even on the camera they appear to be very dark brown because they're just so waterlogged. So we'll just have to see how they go. But got plenty of socks on board about the only thing I've got an abundance of on board is underwear <laughs> so thank you very much for tuning in my friends I hope you've enjoyed this look at some uh, very watery boating please do consider checking out my other videos and subscribing hit the notification bell please my friends if you haven't already if you're already subscribed and you might actually get told when I post the video which is always handy um, check out my Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that where I post loads of boaty footage and scenery and if you want to help me out and support the channel or anything please do consider checking out my books I've got a paperback collection of some of my shorter Kindle books and obviously a load of Kindle books over at Narrowboat books.com to go straight to my Amazon page or check the links in the description. Anyway, until the next time my friends, as always, keep it interesting, keep it boatworthy, have a fantastic day and of course my friends, farewell.